I'm James Moore with Ideal Calibrations and welcome to another video on how to fix gas detectors. Uh, today we're going to look at this filter. You can see this thing is pretty nasty and I'm going to walk you through and show you how to replace it and show you what part number to order. Uh, before we get started, just remember if you need calibration gas, please order it from us. Uh, this is the mix that you need and we manufacture it in-house. We usually have it in stock ready to ship. And to get started, we're going to flip this over, unscrew these back screws here try and do it as quick as I can. So having these filters be gummed up can cause a number of problems. Number one, they can just block the flow to your monitor so the gas can't get through. That's number one, it'll slow those sensors down. Number two, if you get some components on there, they can actually react out gases in the air. So occasionally you'll see on a LEL sensor, or carbon monoxide sensor, hydrogen sulfide sensor, you'll see some errors that way during calibration and then you'll fix the filter it'll turn out it'll be just fine and all it was was plugged up to begin with so it's pretty easy you just zip these six screws out here on the outside and we're going to pull the unit apart sometimes they're a little hard to get apart you can see this one's not too bad but if you need to you can take a little flathead screwdriver and run it along the side here and just try and bend it out just try and make sure you don't damage any of this rubber over mold or the this underneath here. You don't want to screw up the seal. So, let's pull this apart. You want to pull it just like this. You don't want to angle it so much because you don't want to mess up these pins here on the case. So, once you get it out, I'm going to put this aside. You take these two screws here. These two, I believe, are different. Yeah, they are. Than the ones in the case. So, you're going to want to put these to the side and don't mix them up be embarrassing. Everyone would laugh at you. Especially they'd laugh at me. So now we're going to take this apart. Just like that. Uh, now on the front here you can see the sensors here. You got your O2, you got your LEL, your CO, and your H2S, which is nicely labeled on the board. I really like that BW does that. I'm going to put that aside. And here's your filter here. And you can see this one's in real rough shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it out. See it's a adhesive down here so sometimes this can be a bit of a bear uh, getting it out but once you get it started you can usually pull it the rest of the way pretty easily and you see this one's got some little adhesive goop that you gotta get out of there and pull it apart just like that and put the nasty one aside grab a new one from your bag here and one of the keys to look for here is that this is going to go on the oxygen sensor slot, which is right here. So I'll flip that right ways around. So you just take this off here. Try and not let it stick to your hand. And then put it down. You'll see these, these two little slots here. Those help you navigate where it goes. And then you just press it down. And now you're good to go. All you got to do is put the unit back together. Pretty easy to do. Take your, your board here. Flip it down, put these screws back in. You're going to see there's a helpful little thing that says screw right there. And guess where the screw goes? Put that right in. Okay. Some people will ask me how often should I replace the filters? And it's just a hard question to answer. There's no set time period. Really what it is is if it's in the field and it gets a bunch of gunk on it or if you see that you're failing a calibration that's when you're going to want to replace it. Go ahead and put the case together. One thing to watch out for these here. Have to go into those there. And sometimes people will force that. You want it to be a nice smooth connection. Nice and easy. Grab any wayward screws here and put them in. And then we just zip it back together. And sometimes when you put the case on, this doesn't want to go together super easy. So I like to vary which side I go on. I know it's not a car tire. I know I'm not an F1 race car mechanic, but at the same time, I find it makes life a little bit easier to do this, so why not? Okay. Let's get these in. You don't want to over-tighten them. Don't strip the screws. You want to be careful you don't do that. Make sure you're using the right size screwdriver. And then just once they bite down and stop, you're at the bottom. Okay, perfect. 
This one's all set, it's ready to go back in the field. You can see these are nice, clean, ready to go. Next step you're gonna go through is through calibration. If you need help with that, you can watch our video or you can give me a call here. Our number is 734-956-0539. Feel free to hit two for tech support or you can even hit zero and ask for James and we'll get taken care of. If you need the part number, we'll put the part number of this here in the description and a link to our website. If you have any questions, you know, always free, free to call and stay safe out there. Thanks, bye-bye.